Good morning everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we have some new parts for the Volvo 240. And what we've got here is a blower motor fan and resistor. So what we are going to be doing is replacing the AC fan. So basically, it when I bought the car, it never even worked in the first place. And now that I have these two parts, it should blow. I don't know if heat and cool are gonna work 100% quite yet, but we're gonna have to try that out. Um, but I'll show you the parts in a second here. But before I start this video, if you have a Volvo 240, this video is actually going to be very helpful probably because a lot of Volvo 240s have that problem where the blower motor goes out. So you might actually find use out of this. This video might end up being a two-part series because I've heard that this job is actually a pain in the ass. So we're going to see how long it takes, but today might just be disassembly and looking at what we need to do. And the next video might be actually installing the parts. So. Let me show you the parts real quick and then we'll go down to the car and start taking it apart. So as I told you, I would show you the parts before we get into them. So first we have this motor here, motor resistor. I got all of my parts from IPE, so if you need any parts, which if you already have a Volvo, you probably have already heard of IPE because they are one of the best like part distributors and for Volvos, period. So, so here we are. So here is our resistor. This should be a direct replacement. These aren't OEM parts from Volvo, but they are great replacements and I've heard great reviews about them. And they basically do the same thing. So here's the resistor. I've already opened this motor, so the tape is already broken. But this is actually smaller than I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger than this, but this is the motor, got our ground connection. Should be good to go. So let's bring these down to the car and let's start doing that. Welcome to the inside of the car. So as you can see, I've already started to take some stuff apart. So I've already taken out the glove box, taken out the radio, and I've taken out these two little panels here. So if you have a Volvo 240, I can, I'm can. i gonna show you real quick like how to, because this looks pretty daunting. It maybe took me 10 minutes to take all this stuff out. Um, if you have a 240, stick around. If you don't have a 240 and you don't really care about all this, you can skip to when I actually start wrenching out stuff. But for the people who have a 240, to do what I've had here, you literally, this is the glove box. When you pop it, and you can see all the stuff in here, there is just a few screws around here. That's how you take this out. To take out the radio, it's a few panels. There's one like this square here, and there's one up here. I think mine's on the floor down there. But once you take out these two squares, there's two screws here and here, and you can take out the faceplate for the radio and the radio. I have it in the back seat right now, but it would normally go here. And then for this whole section, this is the main shroud. Once you get this part off, it's pretty simple. There's two square, two screws down here, screw on the side, screw on the side, and then two on the side here. And then this panel comes off after you unplug all the connectors. And then there's this metal piece, which goes like sort of behind that plastic piece. And then as the screw holes are all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Two down here, I think as well. So that's ten screws. And then this just pops right out as well. So once you got to this point, I'll show you what to keep doing, but that's how I've taken out what I've gone so far. If you're doing this, take photos of everything because obviously this is a mess and you're never going to be able to remember what it is. I took photos of where all these wires went on the back of this panel and which connector they each go to, and it's going to make it so much easier to put it back. So if you're doing that, make sure you do that. Secondly, if you have Ziploc bags, use Ziploc bags, but I couldn't, we, are, we literally just ran out. So I'm going to be using these small little like solo cups and then labeling them and then putting all my screws in. So for now, I for now I had kept them in these bins when I started to take it apart, but I know that this is gonna be so much easier. So like on this thing, I can write a uh, glove box on there. And then I know that in this box where I kept them temporarily, got all my glove box screws right here. And then now I've got all my glove boxes on the pot and then I'm gonna keep the glove box and the screws with it out in my patio over there. Just why, and I can lay everything out because there's gonna be a lot of stuff that comes off here because the motor, it goes in here and it's gonna be you can't access this without taking out the net which is a pain so let's get into that so i'm gonna bring these over to my patio and some of the parts i've already taken out and then we'll move on so i'm outside right now and i wanted to show you how i'm laying out all of my parts so what i have here are the two shrouds that i took off on the sides the glove box and the two pieces i mentioned before and then my cups of screws I'm leaving these out so that way I can easily come back and put them back later so if you are doing a job like this or you are actually doing this job I would definitely recommend laying everything out so you can see it and so you just don't misplace anything and like especially small things like these with little cups you don't want to lose those especially because then you gotta order new parts and no one wants to do that so I think actually for me doing most of this job I'm gonna time lapse it because I want to fit this into one video it might be a bit long I'm not 100% sure but 
I'm gonna time lapse most of me taking apart the dash. So I'm gonna put the camera back where it was before when I filmed the last clip and go ham. I mean, they're just gonna take out as much as I can. And every time I get to a milestone that's important or something that matters, I will pick up the camera again and I'll teach you. So I just was halfway through this, or not halfway, I was, I was getting there, and I just realized that my glove box light is on. You can see this little push pin, it turns on and off the light. So when the glove box is in and closed, it turns off, but when you open it, it turns on. So that is actually draining my battery, and I've actually had the glove box out, box out for like a day now, so this is probably been draining my battery. So I should have done it anyways, because it's always a good um, precaution to disconnect your battery anytime you're working in your car at all. But, especially when you're doing wiring, obviously, but I'm gonna go disconnect the battery right now, and we should be good to go. When you're doing this, make sure that your terminal won't accidentally reconnect, so that's down there, it's out of the way. And then make sure it's not touching any bare metal spots or really just any part of the frame because then it might short out the whole car. So this little tray down here is plastic and we'll bump that and it's not going anywhere. Even if I shook the whole car, it's not going to move. So when you disconnect your battery, always check those two things. Well, it is actually about to pour. I just checked the weather. It says it's about to thunderstorm and I am sweaty. I think it's like 96, 97. But um, I'm going to quickly wrap everything up. I'm going to clean everything up, put the car back under the tarp and pick up tomorrow because right now I am going to get poured on. So... I'm gonna end the clip here and see you tomorrow. Not two minutes after that last clip it is now pouring. So I got inside and I put all the parts away at the perfect time. So we're back with a new day. I, last night when it started to pour and we had to stop working, I put all the parts in the trunk and I left them there so they would stay dry and they're all perfectly fine now. But uh, I'm gonna just start back up where we started, lay the parts all back out on the table where I had them before and then keep working. So I've finally gotten to a stage where I think I can now take out the dashboard. I've been at it for maybe 30 minutes. I am hot. It is not hard. None of this is hard. Nothing's like really technical or difficult. It's just time consuming, tedious, and like annoying. There's so many different things you to take out. But I think I've gotten to the point where the dashboard is out. There might be a few more screws, but I'm gonna put you back on the seat. I'm not gonna time lapse this time because I think I can get it out. I think I think I'm there. And then once we get it out, I think there are only a few more things we have to take off, a few more metal brackets down here and then we can get to the shroud and replace the motor. And resistor finally, fingers crossed, hopefully we get there. Let's go for it. Oh, of course, oh, the defroster vents broke. This car is 30 something years old, 34 I think. So, not surprised. I feel like there's a plug that's like I'm yanking on. Okay, so if you have a Volvo 240, you'll see, so the reason it's not coming out right now is that if you see, you can probably see it on the camera, this vent right here, or not vent, this little metal bracket on the dash, it has these rubber nubs and you have to, well, this one broke, but you have to take them out from the metal bracket. And if you don't do that, it won't come out. I think that's all that's holding it on right now. Oh, come on, come on. It's like right there. I don't know how to properly maneuver this oh i forgot to take this out hold on all right now that that's out we should finally be able to yank our dash oh come on what do you plug oh, this okay never mind okay the dash light i mean not the dash light the uh what's this called the glove box light okay how am i supposed to get that out what uh Okay. 
if you have a 240, you'll see that under the dash, like sort of that way in the glove box, there's a little silver bracket that goes straight up. I don't know if you'll actually be able to see it from the camera, but it, it's down there. There's another one of those little rubber nubs and it looks like you have to take that off as well. So don't miss that. The dash is how, the dash is out. And okay, let me bring this over to our parts pile and some of the other parts that I took out, like this vent. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, so if you're following along with the 240, this is the mess that you should have. Your steering wheel, you don't have to take off, but you should have the whole dash out, and this is what you should be looking like. So I think the next step from here is we gotta take off this metal bracket the metal bracket here, here. I think that's it because all we have to do is get to this white plasticky shroud right here. And then once we get in there, that is where our motor is that I showed you earlier that we have to put in place. And then the resistor, I don't know if you can see, I'll zoom in. If you can see that little grommet right there, that grommet, that is our resistor. So I'll show you the grommet on the actual resistor itself, but that is what we're replacing. Got a little dog feature. Hello, say what's up McGee. All right, so we got McGee helping us out here. She's supervising, but as I was talking before, this is our resistor, and as you can see, this is that little grommet I was talking about. So there's your grommet right here, that thing, and that's what we're gonna have to replace with this. So here we are outside, here's my dash. Obviously you can see it is extremely cracked. However, here are all the parts that you should have out. We have vents, the shroud, glove boxes, gauges, little trim pieces, main cubby, shroud for the gauges, carpeting, side panels, and then here are all the different buckets of screws I have. As you can see, they're all organized in different little cubbies. So we should be good to go to put all this stuff back. It might take longer to put back than it took to take out, but we should be good. We should be in the money. This is the motor that we're replacing. It is in this plastic shroud right here, this white plastic thing. So it goes right like there. It's a little bit intimidating to look at, but if you like really like take your time with it, it's really not that difficult, especially if you're doing this like following along. The next thing you'll probably see is me working on getting all these parts off and then actually getting that motor in. So let me start the time lapse. gotten to another point where I can show you a lot of new things that I've taken off so first of all you see that this is a lot more open you can see a lot more things now and that grommet that I was talking about is accessible it's like right on top right here so we're getting somewhere um, but to get to this point this vent actually just pops right off you don't actually even have to unscrew anything and then all the metal bracketry that was like here see this one here one that ran up and down like this one on the other side and then one that goes it's right here actually I didn't take this one out because I don't think I'm going to need to, but it's right here. Um, but yeah, once you get all that metal brack tree out and this thing right here, you'll be able to see everything. So what I've actually started to do, let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Right here. Okay, so what I've done, this is my new resistor right here, right? There's the grommet and here's the wiring that goes up to this thing. I actually found the old plug. So as you can see, it's right here. This is the old one that runs up to the grommet and you can see that. So this one actually has two more plugs than what comes in your new resistors. You can see these two empty slots here. I've already taken it out of this one, but it's these two wires right here. There's a red and a white one and oh my hand. A red and a white one and a black and a white one. So you want you want to do is you want to yank these two out of your old resistor and you want to plug them into your new resistor. Now the reason I'm plugging these into my new resistor before I take out the old one is just so I don't lose these two wires. There's a lot of wiring going on over here and some of it I've actually tucked up there that's supposed to be right here. 
but I'm plugging it in right now just so that way I don't lose these two wires moving forward because that is going to not be a fun time. So yeah, I'm gonna plug these two in right now, put the time lapse back, put the time lapse back on, and then I think the next step is taking off this half of this black piece and then the second half. So as you can see, it's like clipped together with these clips. It's two pieces. Once I take off the first piece, I can take off the second piece with the screw that screws in right here. Little screw. And then I should have access to our motor and our resistor and we should be able to put in the new parts. Fingers crossed. Hopefully we can get all that done. I'm gonna put the camera back on time lapse and continue working. Okay, so I got one of the black halves off, as I was telling you. So here, I'll show you the other piece that I did take off. This sort of goes like, imagine it just covers that and it sends air to this vent, the defroster, and then it says one down to the bottom. But here is the actual fan itself and the motor is right behind this. So we have to figure out how to take this off. I think it's just this little retainer clip right here. But if you're doing this, and you're taking off this piece. This piece was harder than that last bowl I was just talking about. That was really hard. This has a bunch of these. I kept it in this little cup. A bunch of little, like, of these little clips. Oh, that's not focusing. You can, you can see it. It's this little, like, Omega symbol looking clip. It basically goes on both halves. So it goes on this half. And if the other black piece was on there, it would clip onto that too. So it clips on them both. They are all like in the back and like hard to get to. Some of them are on the front. They're like one, two, three right here, a couple on top, but some of them are way down under there and you kind of just have to yank them off. And then there's also a screw on this vent right here. And there's a the little hole and then there's a screw down there. And then this black piece should pop right off. But I have to do that on the other side with the steering wheel in the way. And I'm not looking forward to it hundred percent. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can do it without doing that. I think I'm gonna have to. I really don't want to have to. This thing is getting difficult. I might have to go get some food in a second here because it is hot and I am tired. As you can see, I am super sweaty. It is damn hot outside. So I'm gonna keep moving forward with taking all these parts off. It's a lot. This is this is not an easy job. I, I knew it would be when I started. I think I mentioned that it'd be a pain in the ass. It's, it's a pain in the ass. We're getting there, but difficult so I'm gonna see if I can get this shroud off I mean not the shroud this fan off a little retaining clip and then there's a screw here focus there and here and right there and then this whole black piece should come off and then our motor should be right behind there hopefully we can see it so I'm gonna put you back on time-lapse I don't know where I'm gonna put the camera this time but I'll figure it out and then we'll keep moving so I actually can't find an angle to put the camera to get out these few screws in the French shroud, but I'm gonna put the camera down and pick it up when I get them off and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so we finally made some noticeable progress. So I've taken off this whole black fan shroud that directs the air and we can actually finally see some progress. So right here is our shaft for the motor. That is not supposed to wiggle. That's supposed to be still and it's supposed to be able to rotate, but I can barely rotate it. It's super seized up. So also the other thing we can see is our resistor. So there it is right up there, the little green thing, and it's held in by that screw. So I have to go from the other side and take out that screw and the other two to take out the motor and the resistor. You can see the wires right up here. Where's my finger? There it is. The wires up here, run through the grommet, and then out the top. So I actually have to take out this fan side as well, which there's a lot of other things that are in the way and are protruding so it might be a lot harder than this side and this side was difficult enough and I actually did break a little tab that might be important later that I'll have to figure out but there we go the last clip cut off I took a little break since I picked up the camera last it's been maybe like 30 45 minutes I ate some food I was really tired getting really hot 
but now I'm back at it. Uh, this might end up being a three day video, so tomorrow, well, it's going to. This is taking forever. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to pick up the camera again. Tonight, or today, I guess it's not nighttime yet, but I wanna get this black shroud off. I'm gonna time lapse that, and I really, by the end of the day, I wanna get everything off. And I wanna see if I can get the parts in. That might be a tomorrow task, but I just wanna get everything off. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna time lapse it, and I'll see you in a minute. Quick little update, I've gotten the old resistor out. Here it is, it is very corroded, very gross, very old Volvo-like. So I've gotten that out. Um, as you can see, there's now a hole where the grommet once was. And from that past time-lapse, you could probably tell that, let me see if I can get a good angle here. I've gotten the motor out. So it's still plugged in by a couple wires. I have to figure out where those go. I'm pretty sure they go under here. Actually, yeah, they're right there. The red and black wires right there. But this motor is completely disconnected. Like, it's free to move. It's not even in anymore. So once I get that out, take off these two connectors, then we can put the new motor back in, the new resistor back in, and then reassemble the whole front of the car once more. Quick little update. I've gotten the new motor in its spot. As you can see, it's in there. I only have one screw in. I need to put the other two top and bottom ones in right now. And then the wires, they currently aren't plugged in either. But the red one goes to somewhere in this harness. And then I have to find a new ground for this motor because I'm gonna hop to the other side of the car and show you why. But more or less, this is the old ground. I had to chop it because I can't figure out where that goes. I'm gonna have to take off the whole, like I have, I'd have to take apart the whole car just to get to that ground. So I'm actually just gonna tape off that ground so it won't touch anything and then run this to a new ground which is on the other side of this little tunnel right here. And I'll show you where that is from the other side. So now on the other side of the car and you can see the ground from the motor and the place I'm relocating it to is that bolt right down there. It's right, right there. So I looked on some forums, watched some YouTube videos and most other people do this as well. They cut this wire because you cannot get that ground back there. You have to take off this whole thing, which I don't even know how you would even get about doing that. But yeah, I'm gonna relocate the ground. I think I'm gonna have to extend this wire a little bit because it looks like it, yeah, it's definitely not gonna reach down there. So I'm gonna get some butt connectors, cut this wire. I think I have some wire in my basement that I can go grab and extend this wire. But yeah, this is pretty much the last step before reassembling the rest of the car. But yeah, now the motor and resistor are officially in. They're both in their spot. Um, so now I just actually have to reassemble the whole rest of the car. I don't think I'm actually gonna film any of that because it is the exact opposite of how I took it apart. So I'm probably not gonna film any of me putting the car back together, but for now, I'm just gonna cut this clip off and you'll probably see, I'm gonna put, well, I'm gonna put the whole car back together and then you'll see in a second a clip of me like ending off the video and showing you, hopefully, when I put it back together, hopefully showing you that it worked and all is good with the AC now. Okay, everyone, so it's been a few days since the last clip and I finally reassembled the whole car. So the AC is all back in, but there's one caveat that I have to mention. So I've, everything that I've done is installed correctly and all the wires are put back where they are, all the bolts are in their place, but my AC sounds a little, little bit like a dying cat still. So I think that's partly because my car is just old and there were a few things rubbing with the fan that I need to go in and fix again. But if you're watching this video and you were installing the fan and you don't, or the motor and you don't have those same issues that I did, it will work perfectly. But right now, let me show you what mine actually sounds like.
you can see that it is pretty loud actually and it's kind of annoying so I'll have to go back and fix it I don't know what's actually rattling but it's definitely fixed because that's on four and if you go to three two and one it's definitely getting quieter and turning off when you put it on off whereas before none of these worked except for three only three worked before so I don't know what's wrong I'm gonna have to go back in and figure out what the exact problem is but kind of stinks because I put in so much time and it still doesn't sound perfect but that's just a personal issue so if you have gotten this far in the video it should work for your Volvo and that should be about it so that's going to be the end of today's video if you stuck around to the end I appreciate you so much it means the world to me and hopefully if you had a Volvo you actually found use out of this video and yours goes a little bit better than mine did because I have to go back in there and figure out what's rattling I don't know what I didn't screw in or left but if you follow the instructions I found all this stuff that I learned online and through other people doing it so I know that it works because I've seen it done before if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It means so much to me, especially in these early stages growing the channel. And if you notice anything that I did wrong or could have done better, such as the music was too loud at whatever point, or I say something too often or repeat my words too much, please leave a comment and let me know because that's the way I'm going to grow is learning from you guys. Let me know what I need to do differently. So that's going to be the end of today's video. I appreciate you so much for watching. Peace out. See you later. Yes, please. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, oh okay. All right, the 10th, damn.